Yes, yes, y'all. I forgot you had that new keyboard. Look at you slowly fading that audio. Yeah, you, that you, dial is very useful. You got yourself a jog wheel. Is that what it's called? I don't know. I mean, do you hear people call something like that? Like, if you're using it for pr production-based, if it goes both directions, if you're... I don't know why it's called a jog wheel, Will. Why you got to put me on the spot like that? <laughs> you try to make it up. I mean, I know it's a wheel, but what is the jog portion? You can jog in either direction. Jog dial, jog wheel, shuttle wheel, type of knob, ring, wheel, or dial, which allows the user to shuttle or jog through audio or video. Yeah, all right. So you're jogging through the audio or video. Yeah. If you were like in Final Cut, let's say, or Da Vinci or whatever, you can move through frames mm. with that jog wheel slash dial. I used to have one of those shuttles back in the day. Anyway, you got it on your keyboard because you're fancy like that. That's the uh, mountain. Everest Max, which you're still using, still loving. Yeah, it's great. You're having a time with the silent key switches. I don't know if people saw the video yet, but uh, we got uh, up close and personal with those keyboards. Mm -hmm. What would it take for you to leave Android? That is today's interesting question of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, oof. What would need to happen for you to abandon ship? So this is posted on Android Authority, so presumably you have... Uh, plenty of Android fans over there on <laughs> Android <laughs> Authority. Is that is that so? I don't know. I assume uh, that's how it works. It would be the equivalent of a post on Mac Rumors, 9 to 5, Mac, Mac Insider, Apple Insider, blah, blah. It would be the equivalent of that if they say, what would it take for you to leave iPhone? And then you go to Android Authority and you say, what would it take uh -huh. for you to leave Android? Uh, and you're asking me because I'm using the Galaxy Fold now. Mm -hmm. Here are some of the questions. 20,000 votes. So here's some of your options for what it would take. Google selling it. Google selling Android, like getting rid of it. Okay, that's one. Lack of innovation. Major OEMs abandoning it. Google locking it down like iOS. A better alternative OS emerges. Updates become a paid feature or other where you can leave a comment. Mm. This is an interesting uh, set of options here because at no point does it indicate that just some alternative does better. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to indicate, like that should definitely have been one of the options Yeah, that I think people would choose. If, if all of a sudden some amazing feature showed up on another platform on iOS, then people would be like, all right, you know, put Android down for a minute because that feature is so incredible. So I'm you're not going saying, with this one? Kind of. Uh, but I, I'm even saying like, uh, let's say, uh, so imagine some camera feature that nobody expected, like some type of lens. Like you remember how we were you were referencing that zoom lens mm -hmm. techno Oppo. technology, or just some. It doesn't necessarily have to be software, is what I'm trying to get at. It could be a hardware feature that showed up on iPhone that I would be like, well, I definitely maybe there's things I prefer about Android, but that feature is so amazing that I have to put my sim over there. A game changer. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the the one option I feel like is missing. But definitely, if I can, if I thought that another OS was better, mm -hmm. I could easily select that one. Uh, and but I would probably fill out. I mean, lack of innovation that can always be the cause for leaving one one platform as well. Sure. Um, but I don't, I, man. I mess around with both iOS and Android very recently, so it's kind of fitting that you hit me with this because I was using iOS for. God. Couple months, at least. At least, uh, I think it might have even been six months. And you were in the ecosystem. Probably too. You had an Apple Watch. The longest that I used iOS in years, maybe since like the iPhone ten. I don't know. In a long time that I was on, I was on an iPhone for like six months, and then I just got back to Android. Prior to that, I had been. Android is just easier to switch between because there's so many new launches, so many phones you want to try, and the vast majority are going to be Android. Apple only puts devices out once a year. Mm -hmm. um, here's what I'm going to say about this. There's been quite a convergence in my estimation that the, they've become more similar than they have different between Android and iOS. So it's really not that big of a deal or that big of a gap. It's a couple of things as far as notifications go where I still much prefer what's happening on Android. But the main thing that I, I prefer about Android is just the 
uh, diversity of options. The fact that I can buy from this wide variety of brands and this cr crazy variety of form factors, and it just feels more experimental in that sense. Do you have a launcher on your Fold? No. No. You don't? Oh. I actually... You like uh, you, One UI? No, I used to immediately change the Samsung launcher every time. Mm. Up until um, S21 and now here, One UI is pretty good. It is good, yeah. And I was like, man, I don't even think I want to mess with that. Mm. Because there's some uh, usability things... That and 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 the other thing, they diminished some of the uh, nuisances, some of the annoying things, like Bixby, for example. Bloatware. You you swipe you swipe left now, and you go right where you want to into your uh, yeah. Google feed. You swipe to the left. You uh, double tap on the home key, and by default, you launch Bixby. But yeah. you go ahead after and switch that button to whatever you want. And I know that people say you can be, you've been able to do this for a long time. It's true, but once upon a time, it was actually not that easy to kind of quiet the Samsungness of your Samsung device. But we saw even at the keynote event when Samsung launched this thing, and they talked about their watches, for example, and they said, you know what, we're gonna there's a big component in there now, so we're gonna be closer to Google. We're gonna uh, collaborate on things more tightly. Uh, the Wear OS was was a good example of that, but also they're them embracing Google Assistant and mm -hmm. the things that I like about Android. So it's still not a Pixel phone, but man, it's not it's not like it used to be. No. Touch, remember Touch Wiz? I mean, it ain't like it used to be. No. One UI has been a big has been a leap as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So. But yeah, I, I I have no allegiances here. I have no one brand or ecosystem where I'm like, that's just where I live. It will never change. That to me is not nearly as fun or exciting as getting to try absolutely everything, mm -hmm. which is what I aim to do. And one of the areas I was lagging was with iOS. So that's why I spent six months with it because I had been so Android for so I said, okay, let's just see what's going on over here. Because right. I know some people in the space, they want to carry two different phones. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm living a life. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a guy in the world. I can't be having these two phones. Mm -hmm. Like, I got people to interact with, things to get done. Uh, I'm pulling out two phones? Yeah. I can't be one of those guys. That's a big commitment. I, I understand why people do it in our space, because they want to stay up to date on what's going on, advantages, disadvantages, cross platforms. I understand that. But to me, these are still accessories to my life. They're not my entire life. I got things that supersede whatever device is in my pocket. Right. They're there as tools to help me out, but not to become the focal point of absolutely everything I do. Well, I mean, in work, they kind of are, but I mean, when I'm outside of work. So did you want to see the results? Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> you want to see the results. It's, it's gotta be... Uh, uh, it, oh, Google locking it down like iOS. See, I don't, to me, that's kind of vague. Locking it down in what way? Um, like you can't install your own apps, your yeah. APKs and stuff. Okay, that would be annoying. That is that is kind of uh, an advantage with no launchers, Android stuff like that. Uh, I see what you mean. So sort of no customization, nerfing it, nerfing it. Yeah. In yeah. terms of what you can do, customizing the look yeah, that of would it, suck. But but gestures. what's weird is that they're saying they would leave Android for what? If they lock it down like iOS, then you're going to go to iOS, where it's more locked down. See, it doesn't make a lot. The question doesn't make a lot of sense to me in a relationship to the proposal here. Uh, well, I would. They said Google. Maybe they're talking about. Google phones and not Android? I, it's, I'm it not says, too sure. What would it take for you to leave Android? Google locking it down like iOS yeah. gets 27% of the votes. No, you're right. I, I think it is a bit confusing. Are you going to stop using phones altogether? Because if everything's locked down... What's the difference? What, 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 are you, what is your other option? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what OS they're talking about. Are they going to go to uh, Huawei's new uh, lockdown? Yeah. Oh, that's, no, you're not. So that's a, that's a weird one. But I get what they're saying. I would not want that to happen either. Mm -hmm. But I doubt these people are prepared to quit phones because iOS is locked down and then Android would be locked down within that proposal. 
And this is a close second. Yeah, the close second is what I said, a better alternative OS or a better alternative feature on a phone that's on another OS would get any of our attention, as it should. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should always uh, select for innovative features that are useful to us. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Today's sponsor, Purple Mattresses. Well, mattresses and pillows. Uh, when it comes to sleep, man, I take it pretty serious. When it comes to sleep, uh, it's really important because it refreshes you for the next day. You spend a lot of time sleeping. I'm sure you've heard of that before. Like, I, mean, I don't know, a large portion of your life, you're sleeping. Of course. And if that experience is not good, then, uh, well, you're really failing at life as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Very blunt. Uh, purple mattresses have the grid. It is a uniquely ventilated design that allows air to flow through. Okay, that's big for me. I'm a hot, I'm hot. Yes. I'm a hot sleeper i'm just hot in general no i hear you on that front i cracked it open yesterday the pillow right and uh very breathable especially for today or yesterday's hot weather the weather's been insane yeah so you slept on it i have and you experienced the grid i like the grid <laughs> I, like the grid. I like the grid because uh it reminds me of that movie tron they're like the grid oh yeah and the cool daft punk yeah exa exactly, exactly 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 yeah, exactly cool. anyway uh, even when it feels like it's a thousand degrees out, keeps you cool. And the grid is amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips, no matter how you sleep, unlike memory foam, which remembers everything. The grid bounces back as you move and shift, so you never get that I'm stuck feeling that you can get with memory foam. You can try Purple Mattresses risk-free with free shipping and returns, and financing is available too. As mentioned, you have mattresses, pillows, seat cushions, bedding, bed frames are even on there, and pet frames, or pet beds, sorry. You can pick something up for Otis right there. We are just talking about Otis. There you go. Gets his own purple pet bed. That's cool. Purple is comfort reinvented. Right now, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. Go to purple.com slash Lou later and use promo code Lou later. That's purple.com slash Lou later. Promo code Lou later for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash Lou later, promo code Lou later, terms do apply. A Samsung phone burst into flames on a plane, forcing emergency evac evacuation. It's been a while since we had one of these stories. Mm -hmm. The, uh, of course, famously, we remember the Note series. Yeah. Having some. With a video. And plane issues. Oh, you have a video no, here? No, this, this oh. doesn't have a video. It's being reported that a Samsung smartphone burst into flames inside an Alaska Airlines flight. Yesterday evening, upon inspection, it was found that the passenger's Galaxy A21 caught fire in the cargo hold. In the cargo hold. Interesting. So mm -hmm. it was in their luggage. Most people aren't going to put the phone in the luggage. It's unusual. Maybe they were just using two phones. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> they, they brought their iPhone on the plane, yeah. and the Galaxy A21 went in the luggage. Uh -huh. There's enough fire and smoke that the flight crew had to initiate an emergency evacuation. Well, let me follow up on that, man. I'm just, if you want to carry two phones, carry, like, you know. We all do weird things. Well, I go to I go play hockey. I can never decide which stick I want to use. I carry two sticks. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, that's different because you might break one, and then you have. But but if you want to carry two phones, you carry two phones, man. Everybody got their own things here. Yeah, there's no hate here. Everybody's got their own things, man. I just said for me, diversity. For, I just said for me. That's it. Yeah. Okay, we all hear you. Thank God. Moving on. Thank God. Well. Yeah. Uh, this incident happened right after the flight landed at the airport. The phone caused a small fire, and the plane's crew had to use fire extinguishers and a battery containment bag to stop the phone from smoking. However, they had to be evacuated through the inflatable slides. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to do that. I mean, not in a time of an emergency, but they always look... Just looked, for fun? So look at those things. It's a big inflatable yeah. uh, slide out the plane. All devices with lithium. I can't help it, man. As much as I'm used to flying... And I have no apprehension around it at all. I uh, I can't help but just imagine, okay, we land in the ocean here. What happens? Do you know what I mean? When we're up, I don't know if you're one of these people. If you try to not think about it, I'm the opposite. I try to think of all possibilities and it's entertaining for myself. Oh, uh, well, like what would you do? Or how quickly do you die if this thing hits here? Or oh. what does that feel like? Or yeah. or let's imagine landing in the ocean and for, and somehow the plane doesn't completely evaporate on impact. Yeah. Uh, are, if, are we sliding out into the ocean or do we sit in, how long do we sit in here? Like I'm thinking of these things. Mm. 
That's me on a typical flight. <laughs> I'm also thinking of things that can go wrong inside the flight itself because yeah. you're just left to your own thoughts a lot during that experience of flying. Yeah. And I like to weigh all the, you know, I like to take a look around, measure yeah. things up. I can't help it. You're just sweating. Okay, let me ask you something. You're one of these people, well, you go and you get a needle. Whatever it is, I don't know if you're they're taking blood. Let's say they're taking blood from you. Okay. You have a blood test. Yeah. Are you watching the needle be inserted into your vein or are you looking away? Are you looking forward or what are you doing? Um, I thought about this. So okay. yeah, I look away. You look I don't away. Look directly at the needle. See, no. I look directly at the needle. <laughs> Give it to me. I, Do I don't <laughs> I don't say that. Like I'm not I'm not necessarily enjoying it. I just feel that this is happening to me well, what am i gonna pretend like i'm, I'm gonna i'm i'm watching yeah it, it could be a natural tendency to look that way but people feel very strongly about this uh -huh. that they, what are you looking at don't look uh -huh. and i kind of wonder the person doing it they, do they want you looking at it they're not even looking at it <laughs> <laughs> no because it's like somebody observing this thing. They're yeah. trying to hit your vein and whatever else. I mean, I, typically I don't have, they don't have trouble to hit my vein. Mm -hmm. But I'm just curious. I'm just generally curious. I'm like, well, let me see you get that vein right there. Let me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But I think I'm curious. I mean, we can do the poll in our own comment yeah, section we'll do here. Our own poll. If you ha have to get the needle, uh, if you have to, or give the blood or whatever version of that that you're thinking of, um, Oh, man, I had a surgery when I was younger that they had to stab me in the chest just below the collarbone. And you were watching it? And I was awake. Mm. And um, it was a huge, it was a type of needle that would let, that would, what air could travel through, that could actually extract air. Mm. And they had to take a swing at it because they had to get through, I don't know if it's, if it's a bone or it's just thick where they got to put it right and i was watching the whole way i was conscious there was i just because it's, 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 it's a sort of an emergency i guess like they gotta do it fast were you scared and they just go and just go like it was like a thump to it because they had to actually swing into it yeah and i'm just watching oh you know were you scared or what were you feeling i don't know i don't i don't I don't know, man. Oh. I don't remember, to be honest. I don't think I was scared. I was intrigued. You're like, if the plane fell into the ocean, I, honestly, what would honestly, happen? Honestly, no, no, no. I'm sure I was scared. I don't know. I'm sure I was uncomfortable. Let's put it that way. But okay. I still but I still uh, uh, watch. I read some quote from... I was reading Wikipedia. You know I'm reading the Wikipedia all the time. Yeah. So I was reading Wikipedia. I was reading about... Uh, Andy Warhol. Let, let me just, I don't have to do the whole thing here because I can see you're, deep, you're breathing deep and I, I see what's going on here. And Otis was coughing earlier and whatever. But I'm reading this Andy Warhol thing. Yeah. And uh, how I got there, I don't really want to get into too much, but it had something to do with a Jay-Z and Beyonce thing. And I just, yeah. it's not, I don't have to go through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I get on a Wikipedia page for him having linked through a previous Wikipedia page about, about, um, yeah, now you found the whole story. And <laughs> well, I just want, yeah, well, but, just keep talking about it. Anyway, I need to anyway, anyway, grab some anyway, reference on the, the on the Wikipedia, it talks about when he got shot, he got shot and almost died. Right. Mm. And he talks about the experience, how in movies or television, everything is so dramatic and felt so deeply that you assume when something really dramatic happens to you in real life, that it will have all the feelings associated with it, mm. that it would be dramatic. But then in reality, and I'm paraphrasing in reality, when something actually dramatic happens to you, you don't, it does not feel like a movie. It feels almost It feels very uh, dull and weird and just absurd or strange or, or uneasy. It doesn't have the, the romance of it. Oh. It doesn't have all the pieces you would expect to find there. It doesn't have... Uh, 
Let's just get the actual quote. Go to Wikipedia and go to Andy Warhol right now. I, I, I just want to thank the audience for going on this ride with us. I promise we will get back on the rails in a moment here. Uh, and go down to attempted murder or whatever. It's, uh, well, yeah, there you go. 1968 attempted. Okay, here it is. Here's a quote. Oh, sorry. Before I was shot, I always thought that I was more half there than all there. I always suspected that I was watching TV instead of living life. People sometimes say that the way things happen in movies is unreal, but actually it's the way things happen in life that's unreal. The movies make emotions look so strong and real, whereas when things ha really do happen to you, it's like watching television. You don't feel anything. Right when I was being shot and ever since, I knew that I was watching television. The channel switch, but it's all television. Now, this is an abstract. It's an extreme version of what I said. But things in life happen so abruptly and unexpectedly that the processing of emotions often doesn't happen immediately. Mm -hmm. And this could be somebody, something happening to a loved one or yourself or a crisis situation or whatever. It's in retrospect that you really sort of recognize the texture texture of it mm -hmm. and in the moment it's just you're on autopilot and whatever you uh at your depth whatever f uh, fabric you're made of sort of determines your actions in the moment but your ability to perceive the whole thing comprehensively comes later mm -hmm. and that's where the trauma comes from there Is you that, go like initial not realizing that you're in this situation but just moving naturally and you have a sense of that memory of what what transpired it would kind of follow you and then you have time to kind of uh process it process it and try to derive meaning from it and like the idea of wondering why did that happen that way why did i respond that way mm -hmm. all these factors I don't know how that, that all came from watching the needle, but it seems somehow related here. Anyway, so a phone exploded. Uh, it will not be the last. It, it's amazing how many people it can really disrupt. And you see these people yeah. standing on the runway here. Uh, one phone battery explodes. And, uh -huh. you know, you could look at this the other way, though, and say it's amazing they don't explode more often, these things. Yeah. I. Uh you know, it's just unfortunate it happened in a flight. But yeah, the chances are really low. Very low. Yeah. Very low. YouTube premium subscribers can now turn on picture in picture on iPhone. This is the thing I've been, I feel like I've been hearing about this for about a billion years. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's ongoing, but now it's official. The feature goes <laughs> on, the feature goes off. I guess it's been on Android for so long. At least on premium, it's, it's such a useful feature. It's, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't even notice how much I use it. I don't even think about it. And then you tell me that up until right now, it's not available on iOS. Uh, and I can't imagine. But I feel like maybe I was in some sort of beta group or something, but I feel like I've had this feature already on iOS. Oh, yeah? Uh, with Let's see what it says. Okay. In June, YouTube announced it would be bringing picture in picture to iOS. Now it seems to, the much demanded feature is finally available. Perhaps for a limited time only and only for YouTube premium subscribers currently. I just feel like this rollout is different for different users in different places. Anyway, uh, if you're a YouTube premium subscriber, open up a web browser and head to youtube.com slash new and then scroll down to picture in picture on iOS and you can click try it out. Okay. With picture in picture, watch YouTube videos in the mini player while using other apps. Uh, while you're watching a video, swipe up or press home to close the app and watch in the mini player. Yeah, I mean, this is great. Who, who doesn't want this feature, no matter which platform they're on? Uh, this extends the relationship here between Google and uh, Apple. Mm -hmm. They used to have quite a tight relationship, actually. And still to this day, you will see certain features in some cases show up on iOS before Android, which is quite interesting. Not most of them, but sometimes. But you got to remember a time, Will, where... You opened up uh, your iPhone out the box. You had the YouTube app right there. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, they had a deal. They had a handshake. And you still got the Google search. Mm -hmm. These are billion-dollar deals over here. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, those users are worth some cash. Yeah. A couple of bucks. 
Oh, yeah, the OnlyFans U-turn. Uh, I saw this story. This is such a weird... Was the whole thing a uh, publicity stunt? Because the whole world was talking about it. Top trending story shows up on this show, which must mean it's a top trend. After that, <laughs> after after Willie Do puts it on the docket, it's going to be a top trending story. Um, they're no longer going to be banning the adult content. They got user backlash, and everyone was a little curious as to what the original uh, incentive was or, or, or the original restriction was, like why they had to make the change in the first place to ban that type of content. Well, some were thinking it was the credit card processing companies, MasterCard, Visa, these types, that were seeing it as a risky endeavor to be involved in these transactions. And that was because in the past we had heard stories of those companies being sensitive to things going on on OnlyFans, but then they came out and said, no, it actually wasn't that, it was uh, our bank. Like it was our, our our banking setup that they were uncomfortable with for whatever reason. Uh, anyways, they have apparently now received assurances from those banking partners that everything's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. OnlyFans said Wednesday, it has suspended its plans in a stunning U-turn that came after fierce backlash from its users, a spokesperson from the online subscription platform told CNBC that the proposed changes were no longer required due to banking partners' assurances that OnlyFans can support all genres of creators. I don't know how confident I would feel in this if I, uh, if this was my main source of revenue because you're, you're going back and forth. The, the ping, Very quickly, too. The ping pong thing, so... It's like, okay, you got assurances for now, but mm -hmm. like the fact that a company at this scale seeking a $1 billion valuation could potentially pivot in such a strong, maybe more than a pivot, well, they call it a U-turn. I'd say it's a U-turn. Oh, okay. If the potential for that exists, I gotta be looking at diversification if it's me, just mm -hmm. because it's now, it exists in my mind as a possibility. Uh, but where can you go? Twitch? I guess we were talking about Patreon, right? I don't do know. That. what I actually don't know what Patreon's rules are, mm. but I presume, I guess what I meant is just diversification in monetization strategies that mm -hmm. maybe the content is one part of it, but then there's all other opportunities for people to make money. Sure. Uh, um, I don't know. What do people do? They think about merch. They think about selling direct like I, I presume you can sell content direct i don't know how you do that but start start your own website right like there's ways to do things mm -hmm. that uh, you know might you might want to start looking into i guess if you're if you're nervous about this as a only fans if you're if that's your business but my i can't help but wonder about the legitimacy of the whole thing considering how fast the turnaround took place mm-hmm because then I'm like, well, these banking parts, like, who they pick up the phone, they're like, look at all this press, look at all this bad press, and I don't know, there's so much money on the line. What are these exactly. what are these, what are these banking partners worried about specifically? I mean, we said the underage thing potentially, but it's a lot of money on the line. With more than 130 million users, 2 million content creators, and reported 150 million in free cash flow last year, OnlyFans has the kind of numbers many startups could only dream of. Yeah, I mean, the money's there. I, I got to feel like they'll figure it out, man. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's a tough one. It's tough with the trust and whatnot when yeah. things flip quickly. Xbox One's black screen of death is breaking consoles again. Mm -hmm. No one wants a black screen of death. I don't want a blue screen of death. I don't want any screen of death, no matter mm -hmm. the color. They're, they're all equally... Uh, Anything with death is not good. Mm -hmm. Although Unless it's death metal. Or the the drink that everybody's promoting, uh, Liquid Death, which is which is the seltzer water, but it has a really metal looking. Oh, okay, yeah, that's theme. good. Have you seen water's this? good? Yeah, I've heard it, of it. They call it Liquid Death because uh, uh, you know to be edgy or whatever, uh, you can look this stuff up. Everybody, mountain water. <laughs> so you, okay, you, yeah, so so you're just drinking water, but like you, beer. you get to have a cool can. Yeah. As you drink water and fit in with the. Uh, I, I mean, actually, I don't really know what the pitch is. I guess it's just cool branding. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. And if they want to send us some, we'll, it's no problem. We'll... Branding, well, man, you can't underestimate branding. If I had a can of that, people would be wondering, what is that can? But mm -hmm. if you look at typical water branding, it's pretty subdued and lacking character. Yeah. So 
No, I agree. You go for it, Liquid Death. I, you know, mm-hmm. you have my full support here. Most everybody remembers the infinite, uh, infamous Red Ring of Death. Of course, I remember that. I, that occurred, uh, I had that experience on the Xbox 360. That's where uh, the, the ring around the power button would turn red and you were dead. And essentially, you had a bricked console and you would, they would send you another one, you send that one back. It was uh, no fun. The problem was eventually fixed after Microsoft dropped a cool one billion on it. But now there's another flaw plaguing, plaguing the new ones. The black screen of death appears to have largely affected those who've registered as an Xbox Insider, an opt-in program that allows players to test drive upcoming console functions. Ooh, so the beta beta testers, the early adopters, some kind of uh, bug or something like this, I suppose, that could mm-hmm. have caused a problem. For example, Xbox Insiders received early access to the Ballyhood game suspension functionality, which speeds up downloads on Xbox One and Series XS. New updates roll out on a periodic basis, sometimes every few days, and it seems this wave of black screens is a bug related to one of those recent patches. Yeah. Well, this is no good, Will. You don't want to. You don't want to have this happen to you. I like this artistic rendition of it. <laughs> oh, that is cool. This is what it might look like. It's a black screen. Yeah. So smart. Kotaku. Kotaku post number two on the show. Streamer Doctor Disrespect says he's suing twitch the streamer claims he knows why he was banned last year and will sue for damages haven't talked about this story in about a a billion years does this constitute an update Mm -hmm. like hearing that a celebrity you don't care about has died it's impossible not to want to know why the game streamer dr dick respect was banned from twitch so from the beginning he said listen i know why this is the case but i'm not telling you for whatever reason and of course one of those Reasons might be that you want to have a lawsuit at some point. Sure. And so you keep all the information to yourself. Was fam- He was famously banned from Twitch June 2020. I remember this. No reason was given neither to the viewers nor to the streamer himself. At the time, Twitch would only say, as is our process, we take the appropriate action. When we have evidence that a streamer has acted in violation of our community guidelines or terms of service, these apply to all streamers regardless of the status or prominence in the community. Since then... Rumors have been swirling, including on this show here. I mean, we talked about it when it happened. Mm -hmm. People thought, oh, maybe it's something harassment related. Maybe did he say something? Did he do something? Were there accusations against his behaviors? Uh, Was there a victim? It can be very damaging to a person's uh, reputation. Uh, And in some cases, uh, the damage is justified if the activity or action took place. But in other cases, especially in cases where we just are lacking information, uh, it becomes tough to figure out how to process it. Mm -hmm. And I presume this is the case that will be made with this lawsuit is like, hey, I suffered from this thing. My brand suffered, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you did not have good reason or the accusations were false or whatever he's going to end up saying. But anyway, it looks like this post he put out finally opening up uh, went to YouTube where he appears to be streaming these days, I suppose. Yeah. Or it used to be some mixture of YouTube and Facebook and whatever else. But yeah, you had to feel that at some point you were going to get some sort of conclusion to this story. Do you think we'll ever find out? Well, if it goes to trial then I presume we would. I presume we would if it goes to trial. Would it go to trial, though, or would they settle it beforehand? Mm -hmm. They probably would settle it beforehand, in which case it then. uh, Years later, often they can share details after things have been settled. But I wouldn't hold your breath. I don't think we're going to find the exact details immediately. Yeah. Don't hold your breath, Will. Well, I'm going to. It's better when you're breathing. (laughs) Is it? Yeah. Good luck. Nirvana sued this is the legal section of the show (laughs) who's suing who yes I read this first thing this morning it was trending on Twitter Nirvana was sued by the baby from the Nevermind album cover Uh, for those of you that are under the age of I don't know me (laughs) this may not have been a prominent record in, in your life this was a huge record when I was about 12 I don't know Big change. You remember? Do you remember what age 
we would have been when this record came out. What was the year? My sister listened to it. She's a little bit older than me. Anyway, whatever. I had the record. Uh, just a massive hit. Never mind. Get out of here. 30 million copies worldwide. It had this uh, this image of a baby underwater in a pool. And it was a very 1990-something Photoshop where you have a crumpled up $1 American bill on a hook, a fishing hook on a line. And the baby looks to be swimming towards the $1 bill, some sort of comment on capitalism or the United States or whatever it would have happened to be. And uh, the baby's nude. The baby's exposed underwater. Now, typically speaking, this type of photograph that isn't uh, perceived as sexual in nature is not uh, a problem. However, this individual many years later has decided that they, they feel it, uh, Spencer Eldon, that they feel it was exploitation. Because he's 30 now and he 30 wants now. repercussions. He's 30 now. That's crazy. That's so yeah. I was definitely older than that baby at that time. Anyway, he says his parents never signed a release authorizing the use of his image on the album. He also alleges that the nude image constitutes uh, a word that I'm not going to say okay. on the show. The image is exposed, Spencer's body part, and lasciviously displayed genitals from the time he was an infant to the present day. Oh, because they're still selling the record right now. Right. And there's that's what I'm talking about. Non-sexualized photos of infants are generally not considered. Yeah, so... I have no idea how you, if there's no release he's not suing he's not suing for a billion dollars either I think he's looking for a hundred grand from each of the surviving members uh and others I think the record label uh well how much Courtney does he Love, how much does he want total he said um over a hundred grand um for 17 other members okay so he wants like 1.7 million made Something up like from yeah. a bunch of different parties can can all contribute. Oh, there we go. 150,000 150, times 15 defendants, including Dave Grohl, um, Chris Novesilic, the managers of Kurt Cobain's estate, Cobain's former wife, Courtney Love, and photographer Kirk Weddle. Uh, what a weird, what a weird story. And that's him. That's him now. Is it John Chapel? Maybe that's a photographer. But who's this person in the photo? That's the baby. Wow, man, it's a uh, what a weird one. What I always wonder this about kids and babies in general, how they're all going to feel about the content that's being made of them. Whether it's, I mean, this is obviously a world famous record, but who, who's to know what's going to be made of all this? user-generated content that people do now mm -hmm. that involves kids, you know, whether it's uh, videos that get posted to social media, photos, et cetera, et cetera. And then these people all go on to become adults and who knows how all that content gets utilized in the future mm -hmm. or for other people's purposes. And it's a real weird process to have been the baby in that photo. Yes. And then become an adult and recognize that you had no say in the, in the, in the thing. Now I know that there's another take, which is like, who cares? You were a baby. No one knows who that baby is, but it's a, mm -hmm. on the, on the psyche. It's strange to see this iconic thing and know that as a baby, there really was, you couldn't consent to it. And there was no compensation. I, I think in this article it said, uh, they paid him 200 bucks for the initial photo, but not to be used for commercial product. Wow. Um, I want to hear your opinion on this. What if you were the baby? Yeah, well, that's, now, what, like, well, that's what I'm trying what, to process through is I'm saying I have a weird sensitivity around the commodification of, like, of kids in general. I, sure. I, I don't, you know, you're not going to... It's a, uh, I mean, you've seen this play out on social media all the time. People have a change of, yeah. a change of uh, opinion on the matter because you recognize that it's like, okay, um, you don't have control over how other people perceive this thing. You, you put this onto the world and, and 
it becomes available for those to utilize. However, they that's how they. This is basically what the internet became. Mm. And so, I didn't. I I knew I didn't want to partake partake in it as an adult with kids. Mm-hmm. But you don't. Want, I mean, you'd be on social media for five minutes. People's kids are all over it. Right. They put their kids all over it. So if you choose to post it up in an app like Instagram, they they could able they they're able to use it for like a billboard or something. When people send me like a billboard from Thailand and it was me from a video. Yeah. Yeah. You just you, it's 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 in the world at that point. It's not like you took a family photo back in the day and it lived in an album and it was like okay, somebody has to physically come get it mm-hmm. to see it. It's now people's albums are online. A lot of them are public and we're lacking some degree of control. And it's really, I don't know, I can't think historically of another time where you would, where you would have a similar scenario uh, where the next generation are all going to essentially have all this content that already exists about them. Now, we've talked about this in the past. How if, 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 if you, if social media was such a big deal as it is now, when we were 10, 11, 12, 15, 17, 18, et cetera, it just becomes the regular thing to do. Mm-hmm. Like how many things might be on there that you might r- really not approve of by the time you're in a different stage in your life and looking at things differently. Like this individual who's now at a stage in his life where he's like, you know what? I don't really like that. that I don't really like this photo. And yes. I think also for compensation in some form. Well, certainly that's the, the the main objective. Like he could say it, he hates it all he wants, but, you know, adding some sort of demand for money will kind of solidify something well, well, for him. Well, I, I, honestly, I think I was zoomed out even beyond. I wasn't even really talking about this particular case. I was just talking more about how people are very generously s- submitting their children's likeness Mm -hmm. to the internet, to the algorithm gods, and just like, well, I don't know, it's fun. In this, in this guy's case, sure, yeah, he goes and gets the money now. He feels, hey, I was part of something super um, successful, and I don't really feel successful from it. I don't really feel I got my, in fact, I feel exploited, let's say. Um, But same time, You try to figure out the value that was provided by an individual. It's just a, to most people, it's just a baby. Mm-hmm. Like to most people, that could be any baby in that photo. I right. know it has to be a baby, but it could be any baby. And you ask yourself, okay, in that context, without the record going, selling 30 million copies, had they just put out an ad for, hey, need baby for photo shoot? I mean, they probably could have got it for 500 bucks anyway. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's a tough one, man. How would you feel if you were that baby now? Conflicted. I don't know. I, I, I don't think I'm suing anybody, but it depends what happened in my life. All the other factors. Like, what about you? Like now? So I was the baby in the Nirvana. Yeah. For some reason, your parents oh. decided to take you out on this photo shoot. And, and, then, and now I'm me now? Yes. Oh, I would brag about it. <laughs> yeah. You, I, would, I would think it was the coolest thing ever. But I think you would be honored. I know, but, I. but the difference there is that... It's a different life. I get it. Different mentality. But yeah, that's all I wanted to know. If you, if you went through life and you just kept missing and you, you, you never really landed on anything, and I'm not suggesting that's what happened with this person, but the circumstances, things that happened after the fact, your relationship with your parents, because sure, obviously yeah. the parents allowed this to happen. Mm-hmm. If, uh, if there's other examples where your parents maybe didn't have your best interest in mind, and you're resentful about that, and this also happened, I'm just painting a picture right now, this is completely hypothetical, then this would be in the same lens of why did they make me do that type of thing. So it truly, it depends on so many factors how you're going to feel about it, but definitely if it was me and I was feeling healthy and whatnot like, right now I like cool <laughs> i was like here's the here's a tidbit for you remember yeah. the nirvana record uh-huh. that was me on the cover they're like shut up it's no a way. great icebreaker no way that was you i'm like that was me i was reaching for the dollar bill but i agree different scenarios i mean there's another thing too there's another thing people. too which is that this cover is some sort of a political statement 
mm. or at least it could be perceived. I think they want it to be perceived that way, the baby chase in the American dollar. Mm -hmm. So then it comes into question if, as a piece of artwork, if the individual who, who was a part of it, if they have the same viewpoint at right, this point, yeah. or if they think that their likeness is being used to further some uh, political statement that they may not agree with. So there's like too many factors here. It's a lot of factors, but it is an interesting, uh, an interesting development. And certainly a trip down memory lane. I mean, just even that is a very iconic, very iconic uh, mm -hmm. record cover. So maybe the dude does. He deserves something. I don't know, give him a hundred grand. Like, yeah. Call it a day. All right, last one. Domino's attempts controversial watermelon pizza, and customers aren't happy. Get out of here. Yeah. What are you talking about, water? Is this real? Uh huh. This was inspired by uh, a TikTok video of a guy just making watermelon pizza and Domino's decided that it would be a good idea to make a professional video. Okay, but it. not to sell it. They were thinking about it as just like a, a troll kind of thing. Okay, but then not, all right. See, this is the Domino's. Gotcha, yeah. So you slice a, a watermelon. And it uh, becomes like the bread. Right. The dough. Yes, and yes, yes. You put yes. cheese and sauce on you it. You slice it, you leave it a circular shape. You don't, And then eventually you're going to put those slices into... Mm -hmm. We think it might be an acquired taste. Do you? So you actually cook it so it's hot watermelon? Yes. It's grilled hot watermelon. I mean, it looks kind of good. <laughs> you know what? I don't mind it. I would give it a shot. I'll They're give, all great ingredients. I'll too. give anything. I'll give anything a shot, but I don't. I think that this is the wrong approach. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, you want to do and pizza is a sacred thing. Let, let me let me tell you why it's the wrong approach. Okay, it has nothing to do with the watermelon. It's you can't get rid of the crust and the bread. All right, get out of my face with that. It's not pizza. <laughs> yeah, speaking from like a true Italian, like you. Well, I'm not a true Italian. I mean, you are on the scale of you Italians. Are. I'm. I'm. You talk about. Italy all the time. Well, just because I, you know, I grew up in that atmosphere, but you know, I'm, I'm you, you know, I'm only 32% Italian, <laughs> so don't get carried away with it. But, but this, no, no, this no, no, you? no, no, because here's where I was going to go with it. Here's where I was going to go okay. with it. And I'm not playing the super Italian role here that's like, <laughs> man, when it comes to food with Italians, there's rules and everything. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and anger and all of it. But I'm not going there. What I'm saying is just put the, uh, put the, the, uh, watermelon on the pizza like how they do with the pineapple and call it a day just slice it up into tiny little, little cubes. cubes and you just have the sweet and salty thing happening on top but you can't get rid of the crust and make it a watermelon because yeah. I don't think that's pizza anymore so you're like the majority of the audience or people is that what like they pizza. said yeah they don't like it they don't like this ad here it's like hey you know if you are going to make pizza like make pizza like but, but, traditionally but, but, no, no, in, in I, a I'm, sense the key that i'm saying here is go ahead and use the watermelon but don't get rid of the bread yes yeah that's all this i'm is saying too far that's what i mean but at the same time i'm like it's you this is coming from a guy who loves watermelon i was eating yes. cold watermelon <sighs> dude i was cutting i came home late and i'm cutting cold watermelon yeah as right? did i with Ooh. seeds and I totally ate the seeds. It was incredible. Recently, was you were cutting watermelon? <laughs> yeah, I went to Superstore and actually got a full watermelon. Recently? Uh, yeah. I got it at like 9 p.m. when no one was there. Uh, and I cut did it you, up. Hang on, I, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Did you pick up the watermelon and did you knock on it? I, I have my own process. What's yeah. yours? So the stem has to be brown instead of green. Right, ripe. Right. Yeah. And there has to be a sunspot, like a, a yellow spot. And the bigger it is, the better it is. Because it has it allows time for the watermelon to sit and kind of plump up. And the third is the knocking. And you can tell if what type of sound are you looking for? Uh from what I read it's supposed to be hollow. That's yeah. what makes it like watery yeah it's juicy a, i guess it, it, it's uh yeah. with watermelon it's flavor but it's texture man texture yeah. it's i mean a mushy watermelon can get on my face yeah uh watermelon is just like on a hot day i was gonna i mean and i, I really want people to to think about this for a second because 
there's like there's cold watermelon. You try, you know, you get the watermelon. Here's what I would do. I get the watermelon. I do the things. I do the knocking. I try to find a good one in the first place, but then I cut it up and get it in the fridge. Yeah. I cut it up. I got a special type of container, which it almost crisps it up a little bit. It's a special type of container, which has a tray at the bottom. Hmm. Excess liquid is allowed to move through. Mm. And, but it's lifted up off the surface so it can't get soggy. Mm. And it will get very cold. I keep the fridge quite cold. Mm. You will come back a little later and you will pop one of these cubes in your mouth is what you will do. Mm. So you don't cut it as slices. You actually make it <laughs> no, with the cubes. No, 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 no. <laughs> You do not cut it in slices, sir. <laughs> this is not what's going on here. The cubes, look at the cubes over there on the left. Yeah. Okay. How to cut a watermelon. That's a five-star rating right there. Yeah. Cubes, fridge, cold, pop it in the mouth, change your life, tell me a better fruit right now than a cold watermelon cube on a hot day in the summer when it's humid and you're dying. I just can't think of another one. I was actually going to put it on Twitter. I'm like, I don't know. Just tell me what compares. Just, yeah. just name another fruit. Just t tell me, because I want to know, because I'll eat it right now. I mean, I don't know. You may, you may be going to say a mango or what are you going to do? You're going to name one of those berries. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking no extra toppings. I'm talking just the water, just, just the fruit on its own. Give it a shot. We will try it. I'll, I'll try whatever you're going to mention in the comments. But I'm just saying, I don't think you're going to beat my watermelon cubes. Yeah. Juicy, man.